Police say Aubrey Berry of Snellville shot Roderick Burton, also known as Dalla, outside of popular Beverly Hills Mall. Just now, Los Angeles police say there was a brief argument between two groups at a popular Beverly Hills Mall. They say that's when Aubrey Berry of Snellville shot and killed Roderick Burton, a.k.a. Dollar. Alan, we have just learned that this shooting was a result of an altercation between two groups of shoppers that had just left the Beverly Center this afternoon. They were standing near the valet stand here in the parking garage when one man pulled out a gun and shot the other man. That man was taken to a local hospital, and that's where he died a few hours ago. Now, just a short time ago, police did arrest gunmen at LAX. The suspect had apparently purchased a ticket and was waiting in the ticketing lobby. Uh, police saw him waiting there, and that's when they took him into custody. They also recovered a weapon from the suspect. It's unclear whether that was the gun that was used in the shooting. Superior Court of California, Los Angeles County. The people of the state of California plaintiff versus Aubrey Lewis Berry, defendant. Case number BA-356-742, Department 107. Verdict, count one. We, the jury in the above entitled action, provide the defendant, Aubrey Lewis Berry, not guilty of the crime of first degree. May 7, 2009. Aubrey Berry was at an Atlanta club known as Platinum 21. While there, he would notice an acquaintance of him from Clark Atlanta University and approach to speak with her. What Berry was unaware of was that his friend was in a relationship with the rapper by the name of Roderick Anthony Burton II, a.k.a. Dalla. According to Barry, on that night at the club while he was speaking with his college friend, Dalla noticed, and him, along with his entourage, made the assumption Barry was getting personal with his girlfriend and approached unbeknownst to Aubrey. According to Barry, he was attacked by one of Dalla's affiliates while having a conversation with his female friend. Mr. Barry talked about the events that happened at Platinum 21, where there was a confrontation over talking to the same female. Uh, Mr. Barry testified that they had a mutual friend. Uh, Mr. Burton and Mr. Barry had a, a mutual friend that he knew from college. But the people that were with Mr. Burton may have felt that Mr. Barry was trying to uh, talk to the female in a more personal matter. But today, Mr. Berry testified that he had known that woman from college and had known her previously. According to Berry, he was attacked by one of Dollar's affiliates while having a conversation with his female friend, after which he fell to the ground and received a beating by what he felt was about five persons. The altercation was the beginning of the end for Dollar and would lead to a strange set of events that would place his life in danger just 11 days later. Dalla had a show in Texas. He would take a flight from Atlanta, where he stayed, to Texas to do his performance. After which, he went on his way to Los Angeles, California on May 18th, 2009. He would make his way to Los Angeles, California with nothing but good intentions. It was his girlfriend's birthday and Dalla planned something special to celebrate another year around the sun. Being in Atlanta for college, she was away from her family who were in Los Angeles, so Dalla thought it good to fly her out to Los Angeles for her birthday party so they could be together and she could be with her family and friends for her birthday. He actually had a girlfriend and it was her birthday and he flew her out here for her birthday because all her family was out here but she went to school in Atlanta. Uh -huh. So she was in college in Atlanta, so he just flew her back to LA for you know, to throw her party with all of her friends. A kind gesture, but one that would ultimately lead to his end. Dalla would arrive in Los Angeles and everything went smoothly, until it didn't. May 17, 2009, one of Dalla's best friend, Sadiq DJ Shabazz Abawi, his brother, William Scrap Robinson, Team Money associate, Sirius Sai Silvers, and Dalla had all spent the night at Damien T. Money, Jackson's condo, and woke up the following morning on May 18, 2009, at about 10 a.m. Everything was smooth with plans, and it was time to get back to the airport and catch their flight back to Atlanta. At about 1.30 p.m., they started their day 
and later on decided to get something to eat. Accompanied by his brother, William Robinson, aka Scrap, the plan was to get something to eat at Chipotle, but Dalla, however, had this one favorite restaurant named P.F. Chang where he loved to dine at. After persuading the person he was with, they gave in and decided to go to P.F. Chang's in the Beverly Center in Los Angeles before getting in the car and heading to the airport. Dalla pretty much pressured his brother Scrap, um, Shabazz, which is our other brother, he's a DJ, um, and my homegirl Sai into going to P.F. Chang's. It was around 2.53 p.m. Dalla, DJ Shabazz, and Silvers were enjoying their meals. What happened next is where everything went downhill. In a strange case of coincidence, Aubrey Berry, the same guy that got into the altercation 11 days prior in Atlanta, where he was beaten by Dalla and his entourage, was also at the establishment. Dalla would recognize him as Barry walked into the bathroom. Sai recalled at that point, Dalla would have a conversation with his brother Scrap about Barry, but not aware of what the conversation was about. Barry on the way back from the bathroom would also recognize Dalla at his table, but no words are spoken from either of the two. Instead, Barry continues walking and returns to his table. But at the cluelessness of everyone else, Barry had a concealed firearm. The time, 2.56 p.m. At his table is the reason why he was at P.F. Chang as well. Seated there was his business partner, Ali Darwish, who met with Barry to work on an after party to the BET Awards. Mr. Barry and Mr. Burton happened to cross paths coincidentally at the P.F. Chang restaurant, and Mr. Barry testified that he was there having a business meeting with an individual to talk about a party. Barry was also involved in the music industry, in commercial marketing, and has been seen in public with high-profile artists like Neo. And with Los Angeles being one of the hubs for music, Barry also flew out there for business, and that's how he ended up in the particular establishment, as eerily strange as it may seem. Barry now back with his business associate will let him in on the altercation that happened in Atlanta with the said people he just spotted, but made one shocking revelation that immediately changed the mood of his business partner, Darwish. Barry would mention to him the persons were affiliated with the Mansfield Crips. Being aware of the specified gang, Darwish advised him to leave because he does not want to get caught up in any gang conflict. So at 3 or 4 p.m., Barry leaves the restaurant and proceeds to the valet area that is over 200 feet from the door. After he went to the table, he had a discussion with the person he was having a lunch with and that person instructed him to leave. Uh, there were some talks about crips and gangs and things of that sort and the, Mr. Barry's business associate was uncomfortable with that, told him to leave, and shortly thereafter, Mr. Barry left the restaurant. Multiple rumors have been surrounding this particular movement before Dalla was shot. One in particular states that Barry's business partner, upon hearing he had an altercation with the Mansfield Crips, instructed Barry to take them out first before they do, as they had a reputation of having a lot of power in the city. Whatever the case may be, I guess, whoever he was with was saying, oh, like, they got a lot of power out here. You better get them first before they get you. The Mansfield Crips, a.k.a. the Mansfield Gangster Crips, are labeled one of the most active gangs in the West Side District of Los Angeles and came up in the 1980s. Dollar faced many hardships as a child. He moved from his hometown of Chicago to Los Angeles, where his father would take his own life. Eventually, he would be taken in by the Mansfield Crip, Damian Jackson, a.k.a. T-Money, who brought up Dalla as his artist and supported his career. Dollar would adopt the gang lifestyle of the Crips and became a Mansfield Crip himself. You know, I lost my, pretty much my brother, my little brother, my right. son, like, somebody that I pretty much had something to do with his life for a long, you know, for a period of time of, of grooming him or whatever the case may be. So, and him being with me. And so was he a, uh, an artist who was really in the streets or? Yeah, definitely. Right. Definitely. But from, he's from Atlanta. 
He was born in Chicago, but raised in Atlanta. But so then he comes out to L.A. and mm -hmm. does he start to kind of get mixed up in the politics or what? what like no, he, he was never mixed up in the politics. He was he was around us. So, yeah, he claimed Mansfield okay. um, and it was in his heart. The scene is now set for the events that would steal the life of a promising young artist. Barry's in the valet area, 3.05 p.m., approximately one minute after he leaves the restaurant. Dalla and his friends leave in the direction of Barry. Surveillance video at the establishment shows Dalla acting peculiar, as if looking for someone while walking, that someone being Barry. Whether an agreed decision to follow Barry or just yet another coincidence, they were leaving at the same time. The two were about to be involved in a tragic altercation. Barry, now in the valet area, waiting behind two customers, catches a glimpse of what he says was Dalla rolling up his sleeves and coming towards him aggressively at rapid pace with DJ Shabazz and his brother Scrap close behind, while Silvers is off further in the background. According to the recollection of Silvers, Dalla and his two associates arrived before Barry about seven to ten feet, spread in a position that appears to have Barry surrounded. The two would get involved in an exchange of words where things would go south. At this moment, Barry recalls being scared for his life and saw what he believed was Dalla reaching behind his back for a weapon, so he drew his concealed firearm. With the two other gentlemen behind him, at some point he testified that he felt cornered behind the valet desk after some words were exchanged about what's happening or what's happening cuz and he testified that he felt threatened and he said that he saw Mr. Burton reach behind him as if to pull out a weapon and at that time he fired his weapon uh, multiple times striking Mr. Burton four times. 3.10 p.m. Barry squeezed the trigger shooting eight rounds four of which went into Dalla, one through his bicep, another through his buttocks, and two through his back. One bullet entered the front bicep, and the three other bullets entered his backside, two in his back, one in his buttock. Those three on the backside are all through and through. They all entered and exited his body. Dalla began to run after being shot, eventually collapsing about 200 feet away. The shots echoed throughout the surrounding area, inciting mass panic leaving persons running for their lives. Me and my friends were sitting down having lunch at P.F. Chang's, and we were sitting down and heard these gunfires, and then everyone dove down, and literally army crawling. We have band-aids from P.F. Chang's. One of the bullets inflicted a fatal wound, puncturing multiple organs, including his heart. At that point, there was no saving the young rapper. But the coroner said that, that the, the rapidly fatal shot that entered through his back was so fatal that if he would have got shot on a surgery table, uh, doctors would not have been able to revive him. Dalla was rushed to the hospital, but there was little any medical surgeon could do. Dalla was pronounced deceased around 3.38 p.m. Words of his passing spread like wildfire. Being signed to Akon's convict music label imprint, Many had their eyes on the young talent becoming the next big thing in the music industry. His songs like Who the F is That featuring T-Pain and Make a Toast were a few hits under his catalog. The media was flooded with news stations reporting on the rapper's passing. Police say Aubrey Berry of Snellville shot Roderick Burton, also known as Dalla, outside a popular Beverly Hills mall. A young rap artist gunned down at the Beverly Center after an argument that began at LAX and ended in gunfire at the shopping complex. Well, Michelle and Mark, family members say the man shot and killed here at the mall today went by the name of Dalla. They say he was an up-and-coming rap artist from Atlanta. Barry fled the scene, heading to the LAX airport, where he was apprehended by police officers a few hours later as he was at the ticket encounter with the firearm found on him. As police secured the scene, a man matching the suspect's description was located at LAX a few hours later. Police say he was armed with the gun and was on his way to the ticket encounter. His Mercedes SUV had just been dropped off at the airport rental lot. The process for justice and the truth would begin. Barry was charged for the hit and would plead not guilty at an arraignment on May 22nd. His case was centered around his claim of self-defense. According to Barry, after his altercation with Dalla in Atlanta, 
he researched his background to find out his gang ties and affiliations, which instilled in him fear for his life when approached outside of P.F. Chang. According to T. Money, however, mutual friends of both sides had already came to an agreement over the Atlanta situation and dispelled any ill will or bad feelings towards each other. Barry's legal team used his claim of being in fear for his life as the main drive of their case, directing the jury to several videos intended to paint Dalla as a violent gang member. Video 1 showed Dalla talking about assaulting a person known as Two Pistols, where in the video, he states he confronted Two Pistols and asked him, what's happening? The same phrase that Dalla says to Barry when he confronts him at the valet area. Uh, yeah, so what happened was, bam, number one, I'm at the BET thing, at the shrine, doing, we, I'm doing, you know, my whole little press, you know, my whole little press run, and, um, when I'm near my, uh, well, first off, Scrap De Leon called me, number one, and, um, he say, man, the boy, uh, two pistols talking crazy, so then I called my sister, my sister called him, he called me, my sister called me, it was like, yeah, it's official, he talking crazy, but then my mama called me, like, he talking so crazy, whoop his, so, you know, if my mama tell me whoop his, when I see him, I gotta whoop his, you know what I'm saying? Right. So, um, I asked Shadi what's happening. Video 2 shows an interview of T.I. talking with Dollar and T. Money. The video made reference to gang affiliations, which is what the jury wanted to establish. For all you niggas talking about y'all blooding and cripping and coming to L.A., walk another crip in the office and get a deal if you a motherfucking crip or something, man. Because this came from nowhere but Atlanta, That's and he right. really f***ing with niggas. And he yeah. came out here and he doing something for us. The other video were excerpts from Dollar's catalog showing his reputation to gang and lyrics depicting a violent lifestyle he claimed he lived. Such tracks presented were Is You Holding? Keep one in the chamber of my black folk pal. I done felt the burn, but I still ain't gonna learn. Leave a underground, you can call me Mr. Worm. And it's hit with T Pain. Who the F is that? Prosecutors pushed back, stating that Barry carried his firearm with intent to harm Dalla and acted upon a premeditation plan where he waited in the valet area for Dalla to leave and end his life. They backed up this scenario with details that paint the crime scene where Dalla was shot in the bicep first, then turned to run and flee from Barry. That's when Barry finished the job, sending the bullets into his back. If it were in self-defense, then why would Donna be the one running and being shot in the back? A great counter to the defense. It's up to the jury to decide whose story seemed more like what occurred. May 21st, 2010, the case was finally brought to a close, leaving Dollar's mother in tears when Aubrey Berry was acquitted of all charges. Verdict, count one. We the jury in the above entitled action find the defendant, Aubrey Lewis Berry, not guilty of the crime of first degree. We, the jury, in the above entitled action, find the defendant, Aubrey Lewis Barrett, not guilty of the crime of the second degree. We, the jury, in the above entitled action, find the defendant, Aubrey Lewis Barrett, not guilty of the crime of voluntary manslaughter in violation of penal code section 192 subdivision A, alleged Roger Burton, alleged date of May 18, 2009, a lesser included crime to that charged in cop one of the information. Dollar was destined for greatness in the music industry, but his life was unfortunately cut short in a tragic incident. Barry, I suspect, will also have to live with this on his heart. Two lives ruined and family and friends left in mourning. This person who made a choice to take my son away, they didn't just take my son, he ruined his life. He ruined his own life by killing my son. Those are two boys gone. Too many mothers, too many brothers, too many fathers, too many uncles, too many sisters are losing their children. And this is just got to stop. Rest in peace, Dollar.